Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. Republican presidential candidate Will Hurd, the former Texas congressman, drops out of the 2024 primary race. Big shocker, right? Just kidding. I'm sure many of you are asking yourselves right about now, who's Will Hurd anyway? Are you even sure he was a candidate? Well, yes, yes, he was right up there alongside North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. In fact, Burgum is now reviving a gift card giveaway offer to get more donors. Anyone who contributed contributes one dollar to his campaign could now get 20 bucks back as a gift card to help them pay for items like gas. It's supposed to be a knock on Biden with gas prices, but it also seems like a cry for help to get more individual donors. Anywho, Will Hurd is out, but with his last hooray, he decided to endorse his now former competitor Nikki Haley, i.e. the Republican version of Hillary Clinton, warmongering and all. So does this change literally anything about the GOP primary race for next year's election? Not by a long shot, because there are definitely more pressing matters at hand, like what's going on right now in Israel, and there are more qualified candidates to assess the situation. Joining us now to do so is Republican presidential candidate Larry Elder. Larry, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me, Kara. I appreciate it. So before we get to the latest with the horror going on right now in Israel, do you have any thoughts on the primary field shrinking today by at least one? Not really. I mean, uh, I got shafted, as you know. Uh, I should have been on the debate stage in the first one. Had I been there, I would have talked about my uh, my father doesn't know his biological father yet somehow managed to be a successful small business guy. I would have talked about some of the issues I want to talk about. So I'm very, very upset that I was not allowed to, uh, to be up there. And so uh, I don't really have a whole lot of uh, confidence right now. I think that Donald Trump is the runaway uh, a favorite. Uh, and uh, when and if we find out who our nominee is, I think it's very important for us to make sure for all sorts of reasons, not least of which what's happening right now in Israel, we don't get four more years of Biden-Harris. Yeah, and like you said, not only did the RNC shaft you, but then they also treated you and your team like terrorists, saying pictures put up, don't allow these guys into the convention. So, I mean, it's it's uh, it's just so much. And like, it just makes my mind just, I just feel like my mind is just so boggled at this point. I don't even know what to say about it all. But I do want to ask you, since you are a candidate and everything that's going on in Israel right now, they're declaring war, of course, in, in retaliation to the horrors that Hamas has brought to them and to, you know, to their borders. You as a candidate, what is your take on the situation and what would you do should you be in office? You know, and Kara, that's why I'm asking people to go to LarryElder.com because uh, what I will do as commander in chief uh, and president is to provide moral clarity. Just as there's a direct line between the way Joe Biden irresponsibly pulled out of Afghanistan uh, and Putin invading uh, Ukraine, there's a direct line between the way the Biden administration walks in and immediately begins to appease Iran tries to get back into the Iran deal, loosens the sanctions. A lot of people are talking about the $6 billion that the Biden administration wants to unfreeze. It's more like $60 billion in terms of the value of the gas that Iran is selling because of the way we loosen the sanctions. Uh, and once you appease people like this as uh, for, for reasons that Democrats apparently don't seem to understand, you invite more and more aggression. And Karen, I'm a little, I'm a little impatient when I hear people say this is Israel's 9-11. Given the size of Israel, it's 9-11 times a factor of 13. That's how much bigger the impact has on a state the size of Israel. Uh, and um, the, the coverage has been interesting, too. I watch a lot of CNN, uh, MSNBC. I tell people so you don't have to. Uh, and they refer to these terrorists. Even the State Department has referred to Hamas as a terror organization. They refer to them as militants. I'm old enough to remember when you used to grab people and behead them, innocent women, men and children, uh, that those people that do this were called terrorists, not militants. Yeah, well, and I remember also on college campuses and elsewhere where you see, not only do you see kids wearing the Che Guevara t-shirt, you know, forgetting all of the death squads and executions that he perpetuated, perpetrated with communist revolutions, but also they would wear those, I forgot exactly what they're called, but they're those, ne those checkered neckties or scarves yes. that show that people are, are aligned with Hamas, the Palestinian movement against Israel, uh, all of that. And it's so interesting to see, I think that was more of a late 2000s thing, maybe 08, 09, around that era is more so, and you'd see that on college campus, but the idea of it has, has remained, has prevailed. You see a lot of college campuses right now Harvard and the rest throwing their lot in with the Hamas terrorists, terrorists using the image of the paraglider as if it's some symbol of liberation instead of terrorism when it's, of course, terrorism. But so many times we would hear these college kids that once they met the real world, that the real world would just strip them of all their crazy idealism of their youth and all their supporting of mass murderers around the world. But it hasn't. 